what the fuck? Like, why would you pay 5,000 euros? And then I got those mixes in Master Spec, mm -hmm. and I immediately knew that it was not crazy. This is just what things cost. I didn't know that this was so expensive, and I thought it was crazy until I learned it was not. This is the Self-Recording Band Podcast, the show where we help you make exciting records on your own, wherever you are, DIY style. Let's go. Hello and welcome to the Self-Recording Band Podcast. I'm your host, Benedict Tyne, and I'm here with my friend and co-host, Malcolm Owen Flood. How are you, buddy? I'm great, man. You've been good. It's been a uh, talkative Monday morning for us, and I like hanging out with you, so this is good. <laughs> yeah, me too. Me too. For me, it's as always Monday evening. You might have noticed that the daylight in the back is probably gone now. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> my background here, <laughs> you can see that, but Malcolm can through the camera. When we started, we're still... Um, yeah, there was sunlight out there. Now it's not. But I enjoy these Mondays very much. It's uh, it's good to to hang. And we've yeah, been one doing... day. Sorry? I was going to say one day when COVID is a thing in the past, we're going to actually get to hang out in person and have a beer together one day. <laughs> absolutely. That's on the bucket list for sure. Like, yeah. absolutely. Let's do that. You know, here, I'm going to manifest something actually. What we really need to happen is somebody to take the course, realize that they hate recording themselves, hire me to produce them in Germany where... Benny will mix it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the master plan here. Yeah. Yeah. We yeah. get to the tag team a project together. <laughs> Ex exactly. 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 That would be, that would be actually super cool. Yeah. Um, we've already recorded a pretty long episode before this one that we're about to record. I'm still thinking about what we were talking before. So if you haven't listened to last week's episode, please do that because um, this is about the course that Malcolm just, uh, put in there uh, like right. a little plug here um, and it's about the self-recording band academy so if you haven't listened to that um, episode listen to that because we break down everything that's in the course and it's a very valuable episode for everyone regardless of you uh, buying a course or not just listen to that if you want to learn a lot about the whole process of making a record and uh, I just wanted to say that because I really enjoyed doing this so this week is a topic that I w also wasn't quite sure if and how we should do that, actually. Because mm -hmm. it's something people don't really like to talk a lot about. Um, I don't know, it's, it might also be a cultural thing, but especially in Germany, we don't like to talk about money and what things cost and what people charge and all of this right. stuff. So it might it be different be somewhere else. Taboo. Sorry? In, it, it's pretty taboo in most places, I feel like. Okay. Um, but I personally feel that it is a fantastic thing to be open about. <laughs> Absolutely. I totally lost any fear of talking about this, but I still know that it's like a, a sort of a weird topic for a lot of people, but I figured it is important to talk about it. And what exactly I mean is we're going to talk about budgeting or like coming up with a budget for your production, budgeting as a band when it comes to making records. And I'm aware of the fact that a lot of bands don't even have a budget for a record. Or like don't even think about that really or just are looking for the cheapest option and not really like considering all the options and everything that mm. goes into making a record. And especially if you're doing it yourself uh, and you probably are doing it at least like at least parts of it yourself when you listen to the show. Um, especially then people tend to skip this because they think we're doing it ourselves. It won't cost us anything or not much. And we're going to show you why that isn't necessarily true. And we're going to show you what professional services, audio services like mixing, mastering, editing, etc., actually cost if you decide to outsource parts of the process. Mm -hmm. We're going to show you what else is there to consider and how much you should budget overall. And uh, we're also going to talk about why you should even have a budget, why that's important. And right. how to come up with like actual numbers and how to know whether your budget is appropriate for what you're trying to do. Because we can't tell you you need to have X amount of money, but we can tell you how you find out how much money you need for what you're trying to mm -hmm. do. And we're trying to do Definitely. that in this episode. So be prepared. Uh, grab a notepad maybe. Or I would, I would recommend like making some notes so you can talk to your bandmates about this. Because you're going to discover what it actually costs to make a great record and what other bands and all the bands you like and listen to probably spend on making the, mm -hmm. those records. 
Definitely. Yeah. Um, I think if we make this episode and somebody doesn't get mad at us, we probably didn't do a good enough job. So <laughs> we're, we're fully aware that this is going to probably offend somebody who's yes. charging, in my opinion, too little, probably. Um, <laughs> or, or, you know, like, but just be aware that these are these are ballparks based on Benny and I's experience in this field for quite a while. Um, and we're, we both do this for a living full time. So yes. I, I feel like we're pretty accurate in our opinions on this, but that isn't to say you can't find people doing it for less or more that are arguably doing just as good of work. Um, it, it all really comes down to the individual. If you know somebody that is doing good enough work that is way below the numbers we tell you today, you should let them know to listen to this so that they can actually start charging what they should be. <laughs> exactly. And like, I'm, I'm sure it will go both directions, both ways. So I'm yes. sure there will be people m like mad at us for like, um, that we charge too much or it's like too expensive. And I'm sure there will be people saying uh, we charge too little and right. we're like devaluing whatever they do or I don't know. So um, I'm sure you've got, it's going to go both directions. This is a topic that's definitely going to make people mad, but um, that's how it is. And I want you to know before we go into this, that one important mindset shift that needs to happen here is when you pay for audio services or gear or anything related to like producing a record you're never paying for someone's time or for the the thing that the gear is made out of or whatever <laughs> you are paying for the result you're going to get you're paying for the value you're going to get so it doesn't mm -hmm. matter if someone if, if it's taking someone an hour or a week to do something it doesn't matter if it's a a budget piece of gear or an expensive piece of gear or whatever what the only thing that matters is what comes out of the speakers and if that person or piece of gear can get you that and if you can reach your goals through that. And you need to know what that outcome, that result is worth to you. Every yes. person, every engineer will have their own workflow, their own system of, of how they do things. Some people like to spend more time on certain things than others. Some people have automated a lot of things but can get just as great results. Other people are really like manual about some things because they like to do it that way. So that is not an indicator of what it is worth. No. Yeah. The like the proof of this is if if it was the case that you were just paying for time, you could hire anybody to mix your song and just demand a certain amount of hours and be guaranteed a result. And that is obviously not the case. You, <laughs> yes. So once you separate yourself from that mindset and realize that you're looking for a, a result um, rather than an effort <laughs> you'll you'll have a much easier time selecting the right person for the job i think as well yeah absolutely you cannot forget that what you're paying for is not only the time spent on the project you're paying for all the time and effort and like um learning and education and experimenting that got the person to the point where they were able to pull that off so if mm. someone can mix your song in two hours it is because they've spent years like practicing and like honing their craft and you're paying Correct. for all of that. And so it wouldn't be f like, if it was all about time, like imagine like if you compare a mix engineer 20 years into his career or her career, if you compare that person to someone just who just started last week, I mean, chances are they're not going to get you the right results, but they're the same results. But if they do, of course, the experienced person would be much quicker. And you could not only like, there's no way um, determining the value of it just, just by looking at the time. Right. Agreed. Definitely agreed. Okay. So just that being said, so uh, just so you don't confuse things. And um, yeah, let's start. I mean, let's start by, by defining what actually there is to consider. Okay. In a, in a whole project so that people know what to even like pay for, what to, what to consider, what to account for, like or budget for when they, yeah. when they are planning to make a record. For sure. Um, and I'm sure some of these things might not apply to everyone, but we also might miss things that are applying to people. So here's what we've got so far on the list. We've got mixing uh, and mastering, studio rentals. Um, and in my world, studio time is kind of coupled with an engineer usually. Usually, um, There's editing, so stuff like drum editing, guitar editing, vocal tuning, um, you know, maybe drum programming might even get lumped in there. But that's probably going to fall into a session musician thing, maybe. Um, so session musicians are people you hire to perform instruments. Um, so usually for my world, that's going to be like a fringe instrument that not everybody knows how to play. 
uh, like, you know, getting a trumpet player in, you know, they don't have one in the band, so we have to hire one. Um, and then uh, we're also going to touch on stuff like marketing, you know, maybe the music video needs to be taken into account, artwork, whatever. Um, you should also not skip, this isn't on our list, but stuff like getting your music up with a dig- digital distributor like DistroKid or something like that, right? This is stuff that has to happen if you want to release it. Um, maybe physical CDs, are you going to be manufacturing physical product? You have to take that into account. Uh, vinyl, maybe that's on your mind, you know? So stuff like that. I think that's our, our list so far. And don't, don't forget like this, the seemingly small parts like drum heads, guitar strings, mm, guitar picks, call. all that. Good this call. can add up. Like, uh, yeah, all, the, all those things. And uh, so there's a lot to consider, actually. So don't make the mistake of thinking we're doing it ourselves. It won't cost us anything. Which yep. brings us to there, the next... Oh, sorry. Yeah, go on. Yeah. Well, I mean, there could be, depending on the situation, but uh, if you're traveling to a studio in another town, you need accommodations. You need a budget for food for everybody. Um, you have to take into account time off work, maybe, or whatever. You know, it depends on your, your setup and, and whatnot. But it's definitely... The, the point where we're trying to make is you have to consider everything when yeah. you make your budget. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And like that brings us to the point of why you even have to have that budget. So even if, you're, if you've des- decided to make the record yourself, like everything, let's say you decided start to finish, you're doing everything yourself, which we don't recommend um, unless you have a very experienced engineer in the band and producer. But um, if you want to do everything, including mixing and mastering, it's very, very, very unlikely that you are the best person. And like, let's say your goal is to make the best possible ever. If your goal is just to have a good time and do the best you can, of course, like we're not stopping you from doing everything you can just because you enjoy it. But if your goal mm-hmm. is to make a competitive record, to actually move your band forward, it's very, very, very unlikely that you are the best person to do recording, mixing, mastering, editing, drum setup, guitar setup, um, like like production, creative production, songwriting, playing, like everything that goes into making a record, it's very unlikely that you are the best at all of these things. So some parts of it, you might want to consider um, like outsourcing. Like it's, you just, you almost have to. Or like, and, and in addition to that, you probably don't have the best room or the, the right room for what you're trying to do. So it's very unlikely that you can check all these boxes so some outsourcing might need to happen if you want to get it to that level. And that's why you need to know what these things cost. And then also, I think having a budget, even if you're still doing everything yourself for whatever reason, having a budget is good because you need to know, before you start, you need to know what's actually possible and achievable with what you have or how much money you need to come up with in order to make your your to achieve your goal, to make the thing happen. You need to mm. be clear on that. You don't want to realize halfway through that it's not going to happen. Right. Um, so yeah. it's it's very good to be clear, to have a starting point, to have a budget, to know, to have the right kind of expectations from the start. And um, also communicating with other people, all that is just so much easier if you made a budget first. Right. Uh, yeah, if you want to see like one of the... like seven wonders of the world, one of them's got to be a guitarist justifying that they need to buy a new guitar. <laughs> they can move mountains mentally to, to make that happen. It's like they enter the matrix and become Neo. And, yeah. and all of a sudden there's a new guitar that totally needed to be there. Um, and the same can be said for a band trying to justify making a record of their dreams. And I, I you know, love that. Like it's, it's so cool to see bands going and doing these amazing things and maybe going to some cool studio that they like their idols were in or whatever it is, you know. Um, but at a certain point, you have to be very financially responsible as, as well. And and it's not worth throwing your band or selves into debt over um, almost ever, right? Because uh, new slash records don't make a lot of money usually. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so by, by having a budget and, and looking at it, it kind of forces you to like have a reality check about, okay, like what are we allowed to spend on this thing? Yeah. And it goes both ways. I mean, that's the the one extreme that people going into debt and being so passionate about it that they want to do any anything like possible to make it happen. I wish some people would be like that, actually, like not going <laughs> to debt, but like being that passionate about it and like willing to to make it happen. The other extreme is the more common one, at least in my experience, which is like 
people not really willing to spend a lot of money, but expecting it to be like as good mm -hmm. as their favorite records. And also, I think having a budget really helps you defining for yourself um, what the whole thing is actually worth to you. You might not even know that by now. You might think you are super passionate about it. But once you see the numbers and once you actually write it down and make a plan, you might realize, hmm, I don't really want to want to spend that much or take that risk. Or you right. might realize, I've done, like, I've spent more money on dumber things like this uh, than this. So, right. you know, like... Both things could happen, but you need to have that conversation with yourself and you need to be clear about what this is worth to you because that's the only real factor and the only real limit here is um, like, yeah, how much is this worth to you? And I would always see it as an investment, never just as an expense because in some cases, the goal might be to get an actual return on, an, on that investment. So you need to think about how much records are we going to sell? Or how right. what what kind of shows are we going to get through this, or what kind of whatever it is, and see if what you're paying for will actually come back to you financially. But if that's right. not the goal, the return on investment could just be the self actualization or the yeah, like the joy you're having or like the the pride you're having when you're sharing that record with your friends, and that could be worth yeah. something to you. And could even be the experience of recording, like yeah, that. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And you need to know how much that is worth to you because think about it. You spend a lot of money on things that don't have like a, a return on investment. Not at all. And some of it has a return. There's a return to it, but not financially. You spend money on vacation because of the experience and like mm. the things you see and the memories you make, you know. There's no financial like return on investment here, but you're willing to spend money on travel and vacation. You're willing to spend money on a new phone every year or on a new computer or other things. Like People spend money on all sorts of things that don't have a return on investment, um, a real return um, to them, but they're still worth something to those people. A lot, actually. And you yeah. got to think about yeah. that. What is the recording, that record? What is that worth to you? And I've seen that a lot of times when people tell me they don't have money, but they really, really, really want to make that record. I'm like, I don't, I'm not sure if you really want to make that record so bad because I've seen you buy a new iPhone and a new MacBook and these new pair of shoes and you're driving a pretty expensive car and all these things. Like Those things seem to be worth a lot to you. And if you're telling me your priority is this record, but you don't have money for it, I, I, I doubt the priorities are right here, you know? Right, right, yeah. You've just also got other priorities. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, which, which is fine. And I do like that anything that makes artists think about why they're being compelled to do something is awesome. Um, because that, like, that's an important question to answer. Why are you spending so many late nights at a rehearsal space, spending all your money on this thing? Like, like, why are you wanting to go on the road for months at a time and be away from your family? Like, <laughs> yeah, like, that makes it sound like it's a terrible thing. But um, I mean, and maybe it is, but it's probably... Like you, you're probably just in love with this, um, but like you need to figure out what it is you're in love with and how much it's worth to you. I, I think that's so valuable. Like people hire life coaches to, to ask those exact questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. And I'm not going to sound like um, I, I think you should always pay a lot of money for that stuff. Not at all. If you like, if you just love, if you do it for the experience, and you really don't have a lot of money or don't want to spend a lot of money because you have other priorities. Um, then just go through the experience. Then just spend whatever you can on the things you absolutely mm. can't do yourself and figure out the rest. Um, enjoy the ride, hope for the best, and like be proud of whatever you can achieve in the end. And that's totally fine. Like you, Not everyone has yeah. to make or is able to make the next hit record. And it, it, it doesn't have to be that way. You just need to know what you're willing to spend, what the return is worth to you, what the, the outcome is worth to you. And then... Um, allocate the budget to the all the things available. Definitely love it. Cool. Let's uh, dive into like some actual numbers here, and uh, let's let's say so that you can actually determine what's appropriate for for you or what what you could look into. Yeah, definitely. So I, on average, charge five hundred dollars a song for a mix. Um, and that's in Canadian dollars. So, and this is like another thing that makes this episode tricky is that Benny's on the Euro, I'm on the Canadian dollar, and a bunch of our listeners are 
with us <laughs> yeah, yeah so it's like <laughs> you have to kind of uh do some math <laughs> yeah. um but like we're just we're shooting for averages here right um and and depending on the situation i'm going to charge more or less than that like benny brought up the point that if um there's like a full album and we're doing a, a full length of a bunch of songs it's going to be less i'm going to charge less per song um and and if it's a single that they need tomorrow in like a 24-hour rush job then it's going to be more right yeah, yeah. <laughs> um but that's that's the ballpark same sort of like i gave a, a range here and i said like between 300 and 500 euros per song maybe 250 to 500 because it depends on the amount the number of songs also some records are 10 songs but 10 totally different songs then this doesn't right. really apply as much maybe there's always going to be a little bug discount, but it's a different thing if you're having like if you're doing a, a, a rock record with the exact same arrangement for ten songs, and you can, you know, of course, it's got, I'm going to give you a little discount there. Um, yeah, but the ballpark and also like the timeline, as you said, and also this is really interesting that we are starting with this range here uh, because that again is a reason for you to come up with a budget because if you are asking a mixer how much is mixing when I hire you, they are probably answering with a question and they're going to ask you, what's your budget? And the reason is, and you should have a budget then to tell them. And the reason is not that they want to charge the, the maximum here or like squeeze every little cent out of your pocket. The reason for this question is that there is a range and it depends on so many factors. Like if you tell them, I need the, the song done tomorrow and it's like 347 tracks and it's like, not edited and, um, you know, all these things, and it's just one song, and it's going to be pretty expensive. But if you tell them, mm. I'm going to do an EP and I don't have a deadline and I'm cool with you doing it in three months and it's only like a couple of tracks and like everything's edited, the performances are great, here's a demo, then it's probably cost a little less. So there is a range. And depending on your budget, we can also offer additional services or not. So if you... Okay. tell a mixing engineer you have a big mixing budget they can offer okay do you want additional like feedback on your production do you want remote production do you want additional like post production do you need editing do you need some additional overdubs or do you mastering. want mastering like external mastering exactly like all those things and we don't even offer these things if we know you're on a tight budget so that's another reason for you to come up with a budget before you even reach out to people, just so they can offer you something that's actually helpful for you. Yes, definitely. Um, I, I do want, before we get deeper into yeah. wages and the specific numbers, I do want to say that wages change. Yeah. Um, I charge more this year than I did two years ago, for sure. Um, so if you're listening to this and the year is 2030, don't expect me to mix a song for 500 bucks. <laughs> I'm sure I'll be charging more at that point. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully. hopefully. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and uh, I think something we should talk about in this episode that's not really on our, outli our, on our outline is uh, the, are they charging enough? Like if you're looking for somebody and you're trying to discern if they're going to do a good job, I think there's a, a minimum number that you need to stay yeah. above. Um, and I kind of associate that with like a living wage. Like, yeah. okay, is this person able to survive off the income they'd be making if they're charging a hundred bucks to mix a song? Yeah. Probably not. They're definitely not making enough money to invest into gear or training for their skills. Um, so they're they're gonna kind of be behind the, the ball on that. They're probably not focused as on as like priority on your songs. They can't do it full time. So they probably have another job. So they're probably doing this when they're tired and burnt out at the end of the day to like squeeze it in on their weekend or something. You know, like there's there's two things on this list specifically. Mixing and uh, being a producer or a, like a, a studio engineer. Those are two jobs that are really hard to do part time because yes. they take so much energy and focus that if you have other things on the go, it's, it's a really hard thing to juggle. Yeah. Um, so you can kind of discern the quality by their wage, I think. And somebody's going to hate me for saying that. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I, I, I agree so much here because if you do the math, um, and like, as I said, it's all about value and stuff, but still you can base that minimum number off of like living expenses or like living, making a living wage. Absolutely. Because if you are thinking about what expenses go into being self-employed, what you, all the things you need to take care of, if you want to make a living mixing 
And you probably want to hire someone who's doing it professionally. And the definition of doing something professionally is that you do it for a living and that's your job and that's what you like live for and wh where you educate yourself, where you invest into yourself. You want someone like that to work on your record, of course. And if someone wants to be able to live off of their like their, their business, their self-employment, they need to make like at least like three to five hundred, I'd say a day at least minimum, um, if they want to like be sustainable. Because you can't work twenty four seven all day long because that like you won't be healthy and that's not you won't be a good mixer if you're not healthy. So you probably work five six days something like that, um, and then you need all sorts of endurances, you need maintenance, you need to, new gear, you need computer up, upgrades, um, you need education, of course. Uh, there's all sorts of things. You won't be able to work on new material every single day because there are revisions, there's client communication, mm -hmm. there is building processes, there's working with collaborators, there's marketing, there's all sorts of things you need to do as a business owner. So it's not like we're mixing 24-7 and doing nothing else. So if you're not bringing in a couple hundred bucks a day, you're not going to survive very long. It's not possible. And right. if you then think about what you can do for a couple hundred bucks, like you can either like mix a song a day or you can mix two or three or five songs a day, but then you probably need some good processes and automation and outsourcing to make that happen or a lot mm -hmm. of education or all of that. So your expenses also grow so there's no way around it. Like, <laughs> there's no way around it. <laughs> even if you make there's... a thousand bucks or two thousand a day, your expenses yep. just grow. And like, so yeah. Here's another little fun tidbit. Um, on average, people will take, and and this is for like a professional mixer. Uh, a song will usually take about a day. Um, yeah. A lot of people are quicker than that. Some people are much slower than that. But for a professional, a day, I would I would feel pretty safe saying that's an average yeah. for how long it takes to do a song. Um, now, somebody that's just getting into it, um, and I remember this when I was learning, like you just have to just work on it as long as it takes to get something that you are not too afraid to release. <laughs> yeah. And like I spent like a week on a mix sometimes, yeah. you know? Um, so you have to, when you're choosing somebody, if you're going to go with that lower budget, also be prepared for it to take months. If you have like, you send them an album kind of thing because they're, <laughs> they're working like in their spare hours and it already is going to take like a week to get one song done. Um, yeah, you, you know, just take that into account. You have to balance that. Absolutely. And I'm pretty confident that we know what we're talking about here because not only do we have the experience ourselves, like I'm, uh, we're both like professionally in the music business for like a decade or so, um, more or less. And um, that's the one thing. But also, we are pretty well connected and we talk to a lot of producers at all levels. Like, mm. and we, this is really an average with the one one song per day. And also those rates, um, this is real. Like this is how it works. And I bet that most of our peers uh, will will agree with what we're saying here. So, yeah. And I mean, I've mixed entire records in like three to four, three, four or five days, or I've mixed like five songs a day at times, but only because I have like a great process in place. I have an assistant who preps the songs for me. I outsource the editing. I don't need to spend time color coding and all that. Like yeah. I, I have um, mastering engineers I work with. I am very efficient. I, I have the experience to immediately know what a track needs and all that. And that all costs money and time and like education again. So it's not like I'm making five times the money. It's like you know, but I can take on more projects and help more people and like you know, right? That sort of stuff. Yeah, agreed. Agreed. Yeah, and uh, it's one of those things like. I, I love if I can get two songs done in a day. I, I usually can't. I'm normally a song a day. Yeah, I'm mean, usually um, two that, here. Um, but every once in a while, you do. It's like, wow, yes. But sometimes I shoot for that. I'm like, it's a busy week. I really need to get ahead. I shoot for two. And if it doesn't get, get there, like it's not like I'm like, well, that's the time it gets. I'm sending it off. It's like, the song's not done until it's done. <laughs> exactly. So. That's also something you get from an experienced person and as, um, regardless of the service you're hiring for um, is that usually you get, you pay a price. I don't, I mean, there are people who, who, um, who charge hourly, but you usually pay a flat rate. And also usually you get sort of the guarantee that this person will not stop before it is really great. Like if they, mm. if, if they know what they're doing, they will not send you something that they're not convinced of themselves. 
So that's another thing here. Yep, definitely. Cool. Um, Let's move on. All right. Yes. Studio time. Around here for a studio worth its salt, which is uh, a way of saying a good studio <laughs> <laughs> um, that uh, is worth renting, is about 600 bucks a day. And that's usually with an engineer. Um, they they vary. Like I, I could think of a studio that's like closer to $2,000 a day. That's amazing. Um, and maybe a good studio that could be worth it for like 400 bucks kind of things. Um, but that's that's definitely the average. The ones I like to use are about 600 bucks a day. Um, and they're really fantastic studios. Yeah, I agree. Is that sim- similar on your side? Yeah. yeah, not much to not much to add to that here. Like, there's also a range. Like, you can probably rent a great room here for like I'd say anywhere from three hundred to a thousand euros a day. And like, yeah. but the the one thing I need to say here is that what I what I was telling you before we started this episode, Malcolm, is that I believe a studio or a room worth renting is pretty expensive because everything that you can rent for like a hundred bucks or so a day, I don't know if you should even rent that because that's probably not going to be much better than your own jam space if you put a little work and effort into it. So, yes. and I, my own studio included, like I, I have a studio with a tracking space with a small live room. I don't record anymore, but I do, and I do, I only do mixing, but I can do some overdubs here and I've tracked a bunch of records there that actually turned out great. But the thing is, if I never rented that out to outside producers because it's a small room. I know how it sounds. I can work with it. I know the spots in the room that sound great and work, but it's not something you could just hire out to someone else and they walk in and they're like, they're like wow, that room sounds amazing. It's not the case. It's a small, pretty dead room with a great like echo chamber next to it. But these are all things that only I know. And it's like my right. workflow, my gear. It's great and it's like top notch. But I couldn't charge a lot to rent that out and like acoustic and everything, it's like not spectacular in my live room. So if you're considering high, like renting a room to do the recording, go for something that's really worth it, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's like, again, why are we talking about this? By by mapping out these numbers and giving you a ballpark, you can start to do the math of, oh, maybe we do have enough money to go rent a dr- like a great drum room for the, that part of the recording, but we're going to have to do the rest at our home setup. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or maybe, wow, we can't afford that at all. We definitely have to program our yeah. drums instead. Yeah. Right? Um, that's the whole point of this episode. Yeah. And I'm not saying you, you shouldn't hire like someone like me or someone with a stu- studio similar like that to record your drums or your record because if that you hire the person with the studio, it can be absolutely worth it because they know how to work that room and that studio. Oh, yeah. I just want to say that. So, because... Um, but it, I, I'm, I was thinking about the scenario where you want to do it yourself, but you want to hire, you want to rent a great room because of the acoustics, for example. But right. if you're like hiring the 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 room and the engineer because you want to do guitars and vocals yourselves, but you can't do drums, then it like yeah, it can be all sorts of rooms if the engineer knows mm-hmm. what they're doing. So yeah, yeah, and there, there's all sorts of cri- like criteria to why you might want a studio. Like from, lately, I've been thinking about studios as like what's our setup going to be? If it, we're doing overdubs, that makes it a lot more flexible. But if I'm doing like a live band off the floor and we need really good monitoring set up so everybody has their own headphone mixer and stuff like that, that narrows the list down a little bit because I'm like, I want a studio that has that gear for those musicians to be at their best. Oh, yeah. um, you know, so how you want to do your record might play into that decision too. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so just know that it's going to cost a lot of money without the actual people. Just the room, the studio itself will cost money. If you want to yes. rent something great. Yeah. You probably have to get like a house engineer mm-hmm. unless you really know what you're doing. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that's that's so worth it. Absolutely. <laughs> house engineers rock. Love love people <laughs> that are, are those guys. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So yeah. Then um, the next one is pretty tough for me, editing, because editing is a pretty broad range for me. So I, th- I thought about it again after writing it here. Um, if you need editing, and you probably do, um, then you can do it yourself. But again, there are people who do nothing but editing and are really great at it. And editing can cost, in my experience, I, I put here 100 to 200, but actually it can be like 50 to 200 or so because like, yeah. it depends on the experience of the person. It depends on what actually needs editing. So if you're just needing a vocal tuned, it's going to be less than if you need guitars quantized uh, or like drums quantized, guitars edited and all the vocals tuned and quantized or whatever. So right. it's hard to say, but for a whole song, let's say you need like drum editing, um, 
cleaning up tracks, creating MIDI, all these things that come to, like when it comes to preparing the the files, editing everything, tuning the vocals, um, aligning backing vocals, aligning guitars and doubles, like editing the whole track so that it's mix ready. You can easily pay upwards of a hundred or two hundred um, euros for a song. Right. Yes. Um, yeah. It, it. It. It's what you just said. It depends who you're hiring. Yeah. Like everybody's kind of got their own yeah. wage, but uh, it's going to be in that ballpark per song for sure. Um, I. Yeah. I. I would say the same thing. Hundred to two hundred bucks. It's yeah. going to be around there. I mean, there's re- like. <laughs> There's really an upper limit with things like these. So you, you probably find people, you can probably find people who charge like a rate for editing the, what we charge for mixing. And like, right. you know, you could probably have your song edited for, for 500 bucks as well. But usually if you find someone, you can find good people doing it for like 100, 200 and like maybe even 50 yeah. if it's just a couple of tracks or so. You know what? I actually want to mention something. It's going to be in that ballpark if you do a great job recording your music. Oh, yeah. Agreed. If you do a shite job, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a lot more. Yeah, because the amount of work that goes into fixing bad tracks is just massively, massively a worse situation. Yes, absolutely. The performances, and also if you are not like clearly labeling, consolidating, cleaning up your tracks before editing, if you expect those people to do that as well and like sort through your mess of, of tracks, like your, mm-hmm. your pile of unlabeled, not consolidated takes or whatever, this can become really, really expensive if they're willing to do it at all. So yeah, that yeah. being said, yeah. Great point, great point. Okay, cool. Um, so yeah, just ex- the, the point here with the whole editing thing is I just wanted to have it in there because I want people to know that this is not included in mixing mm. usually. So there's three different things. There's mixing, mastering, and editing usually. And editing, yep. many people consider editing as part of the mixing process, or they think it is, but it is not. So if you have recorded your songs and you haven't done anything to the performances and you're sending it off to mixing, you're skipping the editing step. We have had whole episodes on this, but just know that if someone listens to those tracks and they send you a quote and it says mixing, and there is another like thing on there, another item that says editing, and you're wondering why that is, it is because your tracks need to be edited and you just forgot about that. Right. Yeah, that that's a. Uh, I'm glad you said that because that's probably the most commonly missed thing in DIY bands is nobody thinks that editing ha- has to happen because they either assume that like whoever tracked them did it or uh, that the mixer is going to do it. I don't. I don't really know what the decision making process is, but it gets missed a lot. Yes. Um, and uh, it's funny because we we started this by saying that you're not paying for hours; you're paying for a result, right? Um, but anything that takes hours has to be paid for. <laughs> yeah. And editing does take hours. Um, you know, like it takes time. So don't expect anybody to be doing that just like because they you grace them with your music. Like it's it's a job and it has to get done. Yeah. And these days, and I think most most of our peers will agree, these days I don't want to start mixing with tracks that are not mix ready anymore because I, I used to do that a lot. I used to say, well, okay, I guess these tracks need a little love. They need a little editing before I can actually mix them. I'll just do that on the fly or I can work with these tracks. But no, I don't want to do that because I can't serve the song as well if I do that. If I want to focus on mixing and making it sound great and I'm constantly distracted because the vocals are not aligned, because the the groove is not there with the bass and the kick drum or whatever, and I find myself constantly like moving things back and forth and more editing than actually mixing then the result is not going to be as good. I'm not going to be as focused. So I don't want to start mixing with tracks that are not mix ready. I will mm-hmm. do the occasional tweak if necessary, of course. Like if there is um, like a kick drum late in one part or so, I, I just fix it while I, while I go, of course. But don't expect me or any mixer to just fix your performances while they are mixing. It's not good for the song. Agreed. Totally yeah. agreed. Good. All right. Mastering. Mastering. Yeah. Jinx. Um, <laughs> so mastering is going to be probably in the ballpark of 80 to 150 a song, I'd say, depending who you hire. Um, and the, what I would suggest people keep in, because it's funny, we're talking about a budget, but we're also talking about a schedule in a way. Um, and and the different price ranges are going to have different sk- turnaround times. <laughs> um, ironically, more expensive mastering usually means slower. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because they're just so freaking busy, <laughs> which is fine. Um, but you know, 
keep it into account. When when you're choosing these things, you should also kind of like write in when you're hoping to get something back, like what your ideal turnaround time is going to be. Yeah. And mastering can be included in the mixing. Some some mixing Definitely. engineers they do that and they say like, I'll, whatever you book, I'll send you a mastered mix and then you can always decide to like hire outside mastering if you want. If not, mm-hmm. it's fine. Um, yep. Some people prefer to master themselves. Other people swear by hiring others. There's no right or wrong here. It's different philosophies. It depends on the genre as well. I'm sort of in mm-hmm. between. On some projects, I really love to work with like world-class mastering specialists. On other projects, I actually think the result is going to be better if I do it while I'm mixing. Yeah. It's like, depends on so many things. But just know if That's you're cool. deciding to get external mastering, expect it to be yeah in that range. I think in euros, we're talking 60 to 120 or so per song. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I I usually master my own mixes, but still provide a pre-master file. So it's like you have the option to use mine or or not, um, and that's totally fine. I I wish people would just get it mastered, just to see which one they like more. <laughs> like <laughs> like you have mine, and now just spend that little bit more money and get another one for some fresh ears yeah. on the project. Yeah. And you know which like better is better. I don't care if you don't use mine. Just like <laughs> yeah that. that Whatever is going to serve the song. Um, exactly. But that, yeah, it's hard to convince people to spend money. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. I mean, with a single, it's a fun thing to do. I have sometimes I sometimes did like shootouts without telling the people that it's a shootout or it's like a, uh, uh, a test master. I just hired three different mastering guys or girls and women and uh, did uh, like a comparison and without having, letting them know that they are up against each other. Um, right. And because you can do that with a single, if you have some budget and you you do spend that money, you just hire three different people, see who does the great, the best job, and then that person might get the whole record or whatever. So yeah. it's just a fun experiment. And also you, you can see like if the mix engineer's master is maybe also good enough or even the best one. Right. With these. Uh, I want to quickly touch on shootouts. If you're hiring somebody to do a shootout, it's fine not to tell them that they're in a competition if you pay them. Exactly. But if you don't pay them and you're getting like a free test work done and they don't know that it's a competition, it's kind of considered like a dirty move because that person might not have agreed to do a test work if they knew they were in this like competition with a bunch of other people because it's like, is it worth the time they invested into it? So just, I want to mention that because I, it actually hasn't happened to me, but I know yeah. people that have been burned pretty hard for that and like done a lot of work. And, you know, if it's a test, maybe they would have just mixed the course of the song and sent that rather than spending like, a full day a <laughs> hundred on, on the song a hundred percent agree yeah. um, with the not telling people I, I absolutely do that only if I, I'm just hiring them for to master yeah. a song yeah. that's all I do paid, it, I hire yeah. three different people and that way I get what I would really get if they don't know they are in a competition which is cool yes. to see definitely um, and it, like and everyone's getting pay, paid fair for their work but yeah absolutely agreed if you were trying to get a free test mix some people do that but let them know it's a competition because then they might not do that so right one more thing on that actually uh, just occurring to me because uh, this has happened to me test mixes you have to pay for them if you decide to use them it's not a free work <laughs> oh yeah oh yeah <laughs> oh god yeah. I don't know why that's a thing but yeah you're 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 getting a sample of their work and then if you like it you're still going to pay for it <laughs> yes exactly exactly uh, yeah uh, that's that and then yeah. the, now we are off to something that like I don't have I don't really have much experience with that so that is session okay. musicians yes um, yeah. yeah so session musicians are when you hire a specialist to come perform um, in my situation often it's drummers I'm, I'm a stickler for drummers being up to the task and session drummers are so good yeah oh, it's my favorite days at work just literally amazing what you lay down with a, like with a professional session drummer you wouldn't believe it <laughs> totally. um, and uh, but all aside from that often auxiliary instruments like a violinist coming in for one song on the album or horns um, pedal steel is like something that isn't common around here uh, banjo um, if you are one of these people that has a weird skill <laughs> like I say weird but like an instrument that isn't <laughs> guitar drums or bass uh, that's that could be in demand you you might be you, you have, might have some opportunity there I would definitely if you're good at it you have to be really really good at it let the studios in your area know that you are available um, for session work 
because I'm like I've pretty much got a Rolodex of, of professional musicians that I'm always adding to, and I'm stoked when I get something new. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. Also, like these days, remote um, session work is really, really popular and an mm -hmm. opportunity for a lot of you musicians out there uh, because you can, if you can pull off, especially the self-recording musician is like the perfect person to yeah. do this. If you are able to record yourself properly and you have one instrument that you're really good at. Uh, then you can provide a recording, like a session musician service from your home or your home studio for other producers, and that can be very, very valuable. So I've seen very successful remote drummers, session drummers, very successful guitar players, bass players, mm -hmm. like even like very big um, guys, like superstar musicians, basically. You can hire a lot of them. People don't even know that. You can hire a lot of great like bass players or guitar players to play on your records. They, yeah, absolutely. like You can do that remotely. And same as if you are great, you can offer that, absolutely. So I, I say I don't have much experience with that because in my world, I usually record bands and they record with like whatever they have in the band. They rarely hire session musicians, the, the, the types of bands that I work with. Um, sometimes I do, or I just have to because someone's just not up to the task and um, you have to make that decision. But in... Yeah. I'm not as experienced with that, and I'm I'm also like I've been a mixer more than anything for years now, so that's not really what I'm what I'm doing a lot. But I know that it is a thing, of course, and I know a lot of people crushing it in that. Um, right. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, we didn't even mention the price. Uh, on average, it's like a hundred to two hundred bucks a song, um, and in my area, there's like a push to make that a little more because that is crazy cheap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, for for how much time goes into it, especially because these people are often coming to the studio for the day um, to to do the session. So it's it's a lot, and you know, like you're writing a part pretty much on the spot. Um, usually, it's not been composed for you. Like the song's there, but you still have to bring something to the table. Um, so it, it's a, a demanding job that can take a lot of time. So most, yeah, there's a push to get that up a little bit, just to make it more worthwhile. Because again. Like we talked about with mixers charging too little, these session musicians aren't going to be doing it for very long if they can't afford to live. So, like, it's in my best interest to get my like favorite drummers more money so that they're available when I need them. <laughs> yeah, and also it's insanely valuable to to go yep. to, to get back to what we said in the beginning. It's not about time or like effort only. It's about the value. And a great drummer versus a shitty drummer can be the difference between a song like being successful or completely failing. So. That yep. two hundred bucks or three hundred, even or even five hundred or whatever you pay for someone really great, might be well worth it um, if that's the make or break factor, you know. So definitely, definitely, um, yeah. Then like the the kind of last few things on our list here is like the kind of outside of the recording realm a little bit, like the marketing budget. What are you going to spend on the music video? Um, we, we added this little amendment when we were talking earlier, but like supplies, like gear like guitar strings and stuff like that um if you're deciding that you're going to go diy you have to budget that you need to buy the gear so that you can record at all um right like you can't just assume that you already have everything you need you might need to invest in an inter interface or a di box or something right um, yeah. so that all has to be taken into account as well yeah and one more thing we forgot here i think and this is uh here comes a shameless little plug again Education might be part of the budget, mm. budget because yep. you want to factor in things like the Self Recruiting Band Academy or another course out there or mentoring or um, whatever. Like back in the day, I used to buy DVDs <laughs> or I don't know, like, you know, like of, of like anything, magazines, books, whatever you use to educate yep. yourself. You, you, you probably need some education and it's probably cost money if it's like well curated and like well taught and organized and really helpful. So maybe you want to yep. um, account for that. And yeah, when it comes to supplies and material, people are probably surprised how much that can cost. Like if you need two two or three complete sets of drum skins and you need like, I don't know, um, 10 packs of bass strings for a record, this can become expensive pretty quickly. So you can find yourself spending like 500 to 1,000 bucks on just supplies for a full-length record. So, right, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, and, and with the marketing and music videos and all that, we can give you numbers here because that's just, there's no limit. If you decide to make a, a full-blown video for every single song on the record and you want to spend like 10,000 bucks on ads, 
then of course you can do that, but you don't have to. Mm-hmm. So we can give you here a, a number here, no, not at all. Yeah. But I want to say yeah. that this is interesting to me. When I ask people for their budget, I ask them also if they have a marketing budget or marketing plan. And I do that not because I want to have that budget. I actually like it when people say, we can only spend this much on the actual recording because we have set aside part of our budget for the videos and the marketing. I like to hear that because... I'd rather make a little less money on a project, but know that the band is really taking it seriously and they know that they're going to promote this and they have a plan on how they're going to promote this. And I believe them that people, that there's a chance that people will actually hear what we're creating together. And that might be more valuable to me than making an extra $500 on the project. So yeah. if I know, if a band tells me we have like this $5,000 um promotion budget or we have this budget to do one or two like really proper videos and we're also working with that I don't know PR company or whatever this is good and this might lead to me giving you a little bit of a better deal if you really don't have the budget just because I know it's going to be worth it it could be it does I don't I don't say it has to be but it could yeah. be so um don't be confused when a mixing engineer or mastering engineer asks you for the, your marketing plans because we, of course, it's good for us as well if the stuff we're working on gets actually gets heard. So yeah, absolutely, definitely. Um, yeah, newsflash: we also want to be famous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every engineer want- is just a failed musician, you know. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, we we just want to live through you. So if you're going to be famous, we're interested. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like, but but don't expect to get a better deal just because you say that. I'm I'm only saying no. that if I'm really convinced that a band overall, the overall appearance of the band, the the overall impression I have of the band, if that tells me that those people take it seriously and they got their shit together, I'm much more likely to really in, be invested in that project. Yeah. Well, the, there, there is something quantifiable about that. And it's that they are going to be a walking business card for you, right? Like if their song gets millions and millions of plays, somebody's going to Google up your name yeah. um, and see who mixed this yeah. thing, right? So that is why it's valuable yeah. to us. And also I know right and away that probably the whole collaboration, the whole working together will be better or more enjoyable mm-hmm. or could be because like yep. if you work with prepared people who have a plan, who know what they're doing, uh, who, like it's always better, you know? So yeah. it's all, also a factor. Like there is a, some people call it a pain in the ass tax, <laughs> but if like, <laughs> It could be that if you didn't plan for anything and you like are really unprepared, your songs are not like ready to record, you didn't do the research, and like well, whoever you're contacting has the impression that it's gonna be probably pretty exhausting to get you to the point where your songs are ready to to be released, they might charge you a lot more <laughs> just for that. Yeah. So yeah, just know yeah, that. It definitely could be the case. Um, all right. Well, I think that's a, a pretty thorough rates conversation, <laughs> budget conversation. What do you think, if we sum it all up, what do you think could a band expect? So let's say the self-recording band who record, they record everything themselves in their jam space, let's say. So like mm. most of our listeners probably do. And right. But they want to like hire out, uh, they want to like outsource editing, mixing, mastering. What do you think, what's a, what's a, a reasonable budget summing it all together for those things. Right. I mean, like, probably like 750 to 1000 bucks a song would be my guess um, if they're doing all the recording themselves. Um, that's that's probably around where it's going to land. Yeah, it's a little less than Euro. Yeah, but yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Yeah, and that's again, we're skipping marketing. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. And yeah. if you are able to learn editing, you're going to save a bunch of money. So if you just need mixing, mastering and delivering like mix ready tracks, that's awesome, of course. Uh, that can bring the whole thing down, the whole cost down. But yeah. yeah. And that's a that's a, a possible thing to do as well, yeah. right? Um, so you could save like up to 200 bucks right there. So if all you have to pay for is mixing and that person also includes mastering and that, it could be just 500 bucks a song pretty much before marketing yeah. budget. Yeah. yeah. But it's like, it's not rare for people like including supplies and everything else you need for a session and maybe some basic mm-hmm. gear that you don't already have. It's not uncommon or it's like the standard basically for self-recording bands to spend like in euros like 5k or even 10k on a record even if you record right. com- 
the, the, if they record themselves completely because that's just what all these things cost. And yep. uh, I've talked to a lot of peers and I've known what I charged over the years compared to going like completely with a producer and a studio and not doing anything yourself. This is going to be definitely in the five figures for a full length uh, if you do mm -hmm. it well. So it's still cheaper than that. But yeah, I, I think it's hard to do a full length below like 5K in euros, 5,000, yeah. even if you record yourself. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, for a little bit of perspective, and I, I'm honestly going to bump this up very soon because it's, it's just, yeah, I need to. But uh, like 1500 to $2,000 a song is kind of like my all-in production for a song. Um, you know, so that's me producing and engineering it, editing it, and mixing it. Um, th that's going to be your ballpark, you know. So five songs would be like 10 grand, right? Um, so you, you're definitely saving money. It, you know, I wouldn't say it, it's uh, cheap to record yourself to, if you still want to do a good job and get professional mixing. But it's, it's like over a full album, it's a considerable amount of money you could be saving. Yes. Now let the my friend did a full length for two thousand bucks conversation begin. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Let's see, like, let us know in the comments. I'm sure some yeah. of our listeners have made w records way cheaper and still love them, and that's fine. Yeah. Like, that is totally absolutely fine. fine. It's just we're just telling you, like, from our experience and from being in the industry for a decade, that these are the standard rates and what to expect. And if you can find a way to do it cheaper and you still love the result, more power to you. So Yes. That is ultimately all we care about is are you getting what you want out of it at the end? That's like obviously that's what we care about because we're music people. We would just be trying to get you to come record with us if yeah, exactly. <laughs> if that was a, our focus. But exactly. Um, yeah. So hopefully this was helpful. Um, if you were shocked by these numbers, like they seem high to you, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it's uh maybe you have to like like if you just can't afford it, you just can't afford it, right? So maybe you have to go with a a sonically inferior product. That's you know, that's why we're having this conversation. Yeah. It's better to know what you're getting into. Yeah. A, a little quick fun story to wrap this up uh because I need to tell this. Um Full disclosure, I once thought that these numbers were bullshit and not worth paying as much like to get a record done. Uh, it's not. I thought it would not be worth it. And I remember a situation where I, when I started out recording and producing and mixing for bands, and like I did it for my own band as a, I was out of necessity more or less, and then I started doing friends bands, and I, I've told the whole story. But when I did the first project that someone else mixed, like when a band wanted to record with me and they hired someone else to mix it, which is a wise move and was a wise move back then because I was not at the point um, to deliver what they needed. I was not good enough at this point. But they hired someone, a really good engineer, and he cut them a deal. And I remember that email from that person who was saying, like, I, like they, he, they knew him f through whatever. It was like a, a buddy deal, best buddy deal, something like this. And, they, and he offered them, he wrote them an email saying, I cut you a deal, you get the whole full length for 5,000 euros, the mix. Like mix and master, right? And I re I remember reading that and thinking, like, what the fuck? Like, why would you pay five thousand euros for a mix? Are you crazy? Like, they could just hire me, and I could do it for like a thousand or like for five hundred or whatever. Why are they? I would never pay five thousand bucks just for a mix. I remember myself like thinking that, and I'm like, okay, do whatever you want. And I I want I didn't want to talk him out of that, of course, because I didn't know what I was talking about. But I just thought to myself, do whatever you want. But I think this is crazy. I think this is totally crazy. And then I got those mixes and masters back mm -hmm. and I immediately knew that it was not crazy and I immediately learned a, a very valuable lesson because I could have never pulled that off. Never. And like it was so worth it for the band. Um, the record would not have been what it is if they hadn't hired this person. And I quickly learned that this is very valuable and these this is just what things cost. But I was shocked. That's all I wanted to say. I was shocked. At first, I didn't know that this was so expensive and I thought it was crazy until I learned it was oh, not. Totally. So. <laughs> totally. Yeah, there's a, a, a producer in Vancouver City quite near me that charges, I can't, I can't remember, so I won't give specifics and I won't give their name. But uh, I remember when I was told from a band I was working with what they'd been quoted by them and I was like, oh my God, that is, that is a ripoff. And I feel bad saying that now, but I was yeah. like, wow, that, is like, that was fleecing you. 
Fast forward a few years, I know that person and I know the value they bring to the table now. And and they, they're they're the kind of producer that like goes and gets their band signed. Like they you pretty much sign to them and then they get you signed. Like that that's a different job altogether. Like, yeah. <laughs> like yeah. it was a bargain for the price they were quoted. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah. I was like, you should looking back, they should be flattered they had an offer at all. Um <laughs> uh, this, yeah. So yeah, that's funny, yeah. Yeah, I've I've been in the same shoes where it's just like that makes no sense, and then you kind of figure out like, well, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah, <laughs> you guys, transforming careers. Yeah, exactly. This is actually additional value we haven't even touched on. That some of the people you might hire might be able to offer you even more like things beyond their actual service, just because they're well connected or they um, other people trust them. So I've had it happen where even in my like I'm not a uh, a huge like platinum producer or whatever like, but I've often been in situations where some bands got signed after they worked with me and then another band worked with me and that same record label that had signed a band before who worked with me, they would give that band a chance and listen to their record just because they trusted me. And they right. wouldn't have listened to the record if, if they had done it themselves or so with someone else. And some of those bands ended up getting a deal with the, by, like at a label or from a label that I, I used to work with just because that label trusts me. So I could myself provide that additional value to people at times. So right. I know that works. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it definitely works. The The thing I would advise, and I, I bet you agree with this, Danny, is that if somebody's like advertising that as the reason you should come work with them, it's a bit of a red flag. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like if, if there's a producer that's like, oh, I'll get you signed with and Warner Brothers and you haven't even recorded the songs yet like what are they talking about that is that's sketchy sketchy business <laughs> totally there's no there's no guarantee at all and yeah. uh, there's no guarantee that they even listen to the stuff so you can't mm -hmm. guarantee anything uh, like but it's fair to say that your chances increase if you surround yourself with people who are well connected if you work with people who are well connected and like if you do your homework if you check all the boxes if the songs are great you like everything's great, then it certainly doesn't hurt to work with someone who has the trust of like labels and stuff. But like, there's no Absolutely. guarantee and like advertising that is bullshit. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. Cool. All right, we should wrap this up. Cool, let's wrap it up. That's it. Okay, where are we pointing people? Is, is the course out? Where are we at? I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this was like a, a weird episode to do in a way, but I still think an important one. And I'm, I'm, I can't wait to hear the or see you read the comments and like the feedback yeah. to this one. It's, it's going to be a, like a dumpster fire of... Uh, but like, yeah, it's, it's going to be crazy, but I can't wait to see that. Now, when it comes to where we send people to, um, yeah, the self-recording band academy i want to send you there uh it's our course i am at this point when while recording this i'm not really sure if we've launched yet so i can't point you to a website right now but you've probably heard it in the beginning of the episode once it's launched so i don't have to say it again <laughs> and um other than that please go to the self recording band.com slash community because that place is very, very valuable. And I really, really want to have more people in there because that community is where you can like hang out with like-minded people, meet peers, help each other out with problems, get feedback on your recordings. Um, it's, it's just a fun group of people. It's where we hang. It's where we answer your questions as well. So go to the selfrecordingband.com slash community. Join our Facebook group. It's free. It's open for everyone. Um, and yeah do it absolutely love to see you in there come hang alright see you next week see you bye <laughs>